Hola, amigos. Coach Feather. That's right, the other Coach Feather. Checking in from the East Cape Baja to the 2016 Beach Hall of Fame. And special props to Kevin Cleary, John Stalter, the whole crew that puts it together, the past inductees, all you guys having fun at the happy hour, or just had the happy hour, and the four great athletes going in this year, one of them being my brother, John Featherstone, Elaine Youngs, Dane Blanton, Fred Zuich, and my brother John. Tremendous athletes and ambassadors to the sport, great attitudes, fantastic news. This is how easy it was growing up in the South Bay. When we were young, we'd get up, walk down Marine Street. Mike Cook would be waiting there for us every day. Had the courts up, the balls ready. What a great guy. Then we'd go over and see Henry Ford at the guard tower and get a surf report. So it kind of be became our motto through all those years of coaching, teaching, playing. You know, spike volleyballs and ride waves. That was our lifestyle. What could be better than that, I ask you? How lucky were all of us to have had that when we were young, and we still have it if we want it. After all that happened, we get a group of guys that head up from the South Bay and go to San Diego State. We play volleyball there, indoor and out. Bob Clem, I think, is sitting in the audience right now. He kind of started it with my old roommate, Bob Levy. And I was fortunate enough to play uh, with Dennis Hare, who's in the audience tonight, with Fred Zulich, my good friend Dennis. I met Dennis playing indoor volleyball down there, 1969. Fred followed with guys like Digger Graybill, uh, Randy Stevenson, Gary Stevenson, Chris Marlowe, Duncan McFarland, Milo Beacons, Wayne Gracie, all of them, Steve Jensen. They all come down and we, they all play year after year. They helped San Diego State win a national championship, 1973. And then my brother gets a call to go to El Camino College to be the new head football coach, early 80s. So he's got to leave. And after all the work he did in San Diego, and I mean a lot of work, we're talking about getting permits for courts, getting all the courts set up, getting the tournaments run there, getting pro tournaments run there, clinics that he was the, the ringleader of for years, five, six years of clinics at Mission Beach. John Featherstone was the one that really put this all together. We all followed and helped him, but he was the guy that did all the, the grunt work. And then he gets a hold of some guy from San Diego State who says, I can truck load 10 tons of sand into the sports arena and we're going to have a World Beach Championship. And it happened in 1975. Dennis Hare and Fred Zulich defeated Matt Gage and Ron Von Hagen in front of about 6,000 people that we all piled in there to see, to see this match. And it was a tremendous event, a one-time only event. But we, we pulled it off. It was fun. So John goes up uh, to El Camino, and he's a full-time coach. And he says, I'm going to start my clinics and my camps again. I'm going to be a pro referee. I said, no, you're not. You don't have time. You're a college football coach now. And John, by the way, was a spectacular wide receiver at San Diego State. Played for Don Correale. So I don't know how he did it. He raised a family. He's coaching full-time at El Camino. And he's doing all these things on the beach. And he's done them, I don't know, I guess for the last 20, 23 years in, in the South Bay. So all I can say is there's nobody like my brother for having the passion, the perseverance, the motivational skills to bring people together of all ages to learn this great game of volleyball. The reason John did this while he was coaching football is because it was his lifestyle. He did not want to leave his lifestyle. Who would? For all the rest of us, it, it's, it's the way it was and it's, it remains that way. But he had double time, he double timed this and pulled it off somehow for, I don't know, 25, 30 years. So he's, <clears throat> John, bro, I love you dearly and you truly deserve this honor of going in as an ambassador to the sport of beach volleyball, without question. And I can honestly say that John and I had the privilege of playing against Dennis Hare and Fred Zulich on the beach in La Jolla, Mission Beach, PB, OB, all these places in San Diego for years and years and years. And 
if it wasn't for guys like George Stepanoff at Ocean Beach, who also did a tremendous job running tournaments, it would have never happened. So we got this whole thing going, but Dennis and Fred were two guys that we, we were inspired to give them our best shot during the week to get them ready for the big tournaments. And in, in turn, it made us better, <clears throat> better beach players as well. But every time we would beat those guys, if it was during the week, we had a big feather in our hat, no pun intended, because they were awfully great athletes, and it was a lot of fun to be able to play against them. Now, I have one little story I want to tell as far as, uh, as, far as the playing goes with John and I, and this will be the last thing I'm going to talk about tonight. First of all, he picked the right side as a five foot eight player. I picked the left. Not very smart to pick the left side if you're five eight. But there were guys that could do it, but most of them were right siders. Kurt Donaldson was a right side player. Uh, Bobby Garcia. By the way, I ran into Bobby at a wake in San Onofre a month ago. He knows more people than anybody I've ever met in my life. You guys all know Garce. He might even be in the audience tonight. I don't know. What a guy. Boy, could he play the game as a little guy. So anyways, <clears throat> We're playing for our AAA finally in East Beach about 1976, 77. We come down to the beach on Sunday. Uh, we don't know who we're going to play. We look at the board. We got Lee and Hanseth. And they're standing there, and they're looking at the board, and they're going, we got the feathers, no problem. Well, that lit a fire under John and I. John Lee was standing right there. You know John. And he said, Feather, come here. I know you like to drink that strong tea. I got something to put in it. I got a little ginseng here. I got a little guarana. Let's pour it in there. So John Lee gives me this ginseng, this guarana. We drink this stuff. And John and I are running up down the beach, fired up to play this match for our AAA. We're so ready to go. <clears throat> we got him down. We got him 14-12. And, and John receives the ball. As he's passing and approaching to hit, and I set him 50-50, by the way, he's talking to me. And he's going, game's over, Fob. We're AAA as he hits the ball. And he hits it a half inch out. It just barely misses the line. And Cubby's down there, ref, and I'm yelling at Cubby. John's yelling at Cubby. Lee's going, feather, it's out. I said, no, it's not. It's on the line, I think, Greg. It's on. He said, no, I saw it out. Well, anyways, to make a long story short, they came back and beat us 17-15, and we lost our AAA. So what happened? I said, what are we going to do? I said, I'm really, really upset. John said, I am too. I said, there's two coolers over there. Let's take it out on those coolers. So we went over being the old former football players we were, and we just lunged at the two coolers, forearms into the coolers, shattered the coolers. I, I uh, got uh, cut my arm up on a beer bottle that was in there. Back in those days, you could drink on the beer, not anymore. And then later on on the way home, I was so mad an hour and a half later because John was talking to me during his approach that I slugged the steering wheel and my old Volkswagen camper and broke the steering wheel, and I had to have somebody tow me off the freeway to get home. Anyways, that was, that was the highlight of our career, but it was right there, and, and, and Jay and Greg weren't going to let us get it. So that's how it all turned out. That, that's that's my, my big story of the day. I just want to say hi to everybody from down here in Baja. I wish I was there. Have a good time. Congratulations to Fred and my brother, especially because they're so close to me. And Dennis, as you know, your best painting is sitting on my wall up here. I wish I could show it to everybody, but that's all I got to say. Have a good time tonight.